There's nothing very special about this proof. It didn't fit in the packet, and that's the main reason that it's here. It is kind of long, and so I've set it up that so we can basically use two columns. All right, let's start. We see that line 1 has an ampersand as its main connective. We might as well break that up, and we get S and tilde tilde B, both by one ampersand out. All right, that was easy. When you see tilde tilde in front of a single letter, you're always welcome to use double negation and drop those tildes, but I'm usually not in a great hurry to drop two tildes off a single letter. I will check off line one. Now my attention goes to line two and I see that it's a wedge. Well, for a wedge, we're supposed to think about disjunctive argument and wedge out. Always think about DA first, because it's one of the easiest and most intuitive rules that we have. To do disjunctive argument, remind yourself that either the P part or the Q part has to be true. At least one is true. Well, if I could find tilde B air away, then I would know that it's not the P part, so it would have to be the Q part. But if I could find tilde, tilde S, then I would know it's not the Q part, so it would have to be the B part, the P part. Do I find tilde tilde s? Well, I don't, but hopefully you're recognizing that s is the same thing as tilde tilde s, but because we're really rigid about the rules, we have to show it. So I'm going to use double negation to create tilde tilde s, 4dn is the justification, and basically I was inspired by line 2 to do this. Notice let me put a square around tilde s. This says either p or q has to be true, and now what I've got on line 6 is a very clear indication that it's not the q part. Well, if it's not the q part, then it must be the p part. And so on line 7, I'm going to write b arrow a. And the justification for that will be 2, 6, and the rule we've been thinking about, which is disjunctive argument, DA. Okay, now I can check off 2 and 6. I also used 4, so I'll check it off as well. Just helps focus our attention. All right, now we would look at line 3. It has an arrow as its main connective, and that means we've got to think about arrow out and also modus tollens. To do arrow out, we would need tilde k, and clearly that's not here. To do modus tollens, we would need to have the negation of the Q part. So that means the Q part plus one more tilde, which would be tilde tilde J arrow M. And I take a look. Yeah, I don't have tilde tilde J arrow M. Now if I had just regular J arrow M, I could add two tildes, but I don't have regular J arrow M either, so it looks like I'm not going to be working on line three. All right, line five, still basically uninteresting. And then line seven, you'll notice that here's an arrow, and to do arrow out, basically I would need B. So I could do the double negation and do the arrow out, and there's nothing wrong if you do that, but it turns out that it's completely unnecessary for this proof, and for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to leave out that, I'm, I'm not going to do the arrow out here. If you did arrow out by doing double negation and then take 7 and 8 and do arrow out, it's okay, but it's just not necessary. Much more interesting at this point to say we're stuck at the top, so it's time to go to the bottom. We see that we have an ampersand as our main connective, so it's time to do two lines for ampersand. Well, that means we put one thing in the middle and one thing at the bottom. I'm going to take this as the middle of the space and then the bottom of the space means just right above the conclusion. Because basically what I'm doing is saying I have two proofs that I have to do. I have to prove A double arrow B and then I have to prove J wedge K. So space to prove this, space to prove J wedge K. Now A double arrow B, that's where my attention goes and I see it's a double arrow. Oh, well that means I've got to do two lines for the double arrow. And that would mean I have to pencil in A arrow B and also B arrow A. But notice 
B arrow A already exists, so all I'm really going to do is pencil in the A arrow B. It's called two lines for double arrow, but if you already have one of the lines, there is no requirement to reprove it. So all I need to do is prove A arrow B, and then I'll be able to take 7 plus this line and put them together to build the double arrow. Well, A arrow B has an arrow as its main connective, so I'm going to need to make a box to prove it, and of course this will be a box for arrow in. It's not a very neat box, but uh, I guess that's all right. A at the top, B at the bottom, and it is of course a provisional assumption for arrow in. That's line 8. And now all I need to do is get to B. Ah, now I'm inspired to do the double negation and drop these two tildes. In fact, finishing this box is trivial. I just do 5DN and success. I have proved A arrow B. So that's line 10. It will be 8 through 9 arrow in. I don't exactly have a nice neat column there, but I think you're getting the idea. 11 is going to be 7 plus 10, double arrow in. All right, success. I proved A double arrow B. I'm really halfway done at this point. I now need to prove J wedge K. Well, J wedge K has a wedge as its connective. What's the bottom up strategy for a wedge? It's tilde out. So now I'm going to make a big box to prove the wedge. Truth is, I don't need this much space, but this is the available space. And I always like to say, when you make a box, use up all the available space. So what goes at the top? It's going to be a PA for tilde out. And that means on what will be line 12, we're going to put J wedge K at the middle. And then we put it in parentheses and add a tilde. Now we've assumed the opposite of J wedge K. Of course, what are we looking for at the bottom? A contradiction. The payoff for assuming the opposite of a wedge is that you get to do De Morgan's, which means switch the connective and distribute the tilde. Tilde J, ampersand, tilde K. And that would be 12 DM. And now that we have done the De Morgan's, we can break it up because that's an ampersand. So 14 and 15, that becomes tilde J and also tilde K. And 13 ampersand out. Done twice. Okay, I can check off 12 and 13. I worked on those. We know that this box from 8 to 9, this is off limits. Uh, what else have we worked on? We worked on 5, we worked on 8 and 9. We worked on 7 and 10. All right. Well, it looks like line 3 is the one place where there's some action. And to do arrow out, we'd need tilde K. And of course, we have that. So on line 16, we now get to do the arrow out and get tilde J arrow M. This proof is be winding down here. This will be 315 arrow out. And notice. What's the main connective of what we just created? It's a tilde. That's always good news. And in this particular case, it means we get to do arrow exchange. Arrow turns into an ampersand. Bring down the P part as is. Add a tilde to the Q part. And that will be 16 arrow exchange, AE. That's an ampersand. We'll break it up. Now. We don't really need both parts, but there's no reason not to take them. I've got the space. So 17 ampersand out, done twice. And I think we're virtually done, because now you see we have J and tilde J. So on line 20, I will put them together. And that would be 14, 18 ampersand in. And having done that, 21 will be 12 through 20. And that's tilde out. And now I am finished with the entire proof. What's the justification for 22 going to be? 
Well, remember when we penciled in the two things for two lines for ampersand? It was those two lines. They now exist. We just do ampersand in and put them together. 11, 21, ampersand in. And there we go.